I, I will maybe just repeat the goal of the talk. Uh, it would be uh, open uh, WDV equations. Um, I mean, that's the official goal. I ho hopefully, I, I do get to do that. Um, which has two values. One, uh, one which is uh, really the focus of this talk is its structure on a relative uh, on relative quantum uh, cohomology. And the other one is it's a computational tool uh, for open ground with invariance. Did I get it? No, I did. Oh, yes, I did. Good. Um, so I will start. Maybe I will outline this as a plan. Uh, um, I'll describe a infinity, uh, given a infinity structure, um, and define a notion of bounding pairs, which these two uh, creatures give on one hand a superpotential, which is which is a generating function for the above mentioned uh, open graph of Witten variance. And um, also, this gives the relative quantum cohomology structure, uh, which will be uh, the focus today. Um, so let me start with the assumptions. Symplectic manifold, a Lagrangian submanifold, and an almost complex structure. Um, the symplectic manifold, so let's say uh, it's compact uh, and of complex dimension n, which is assumed to be odd. Uh, the Lagrangian should be, let's say, connected and relative to spin uh, oriented and maybe I forgot something else, I'm not sure. Um, OK. So uh, let me start with the infinity structure uh, corresponding to uh, differential forms, uh, infinity structure and differential forms in the Lagrangian. So um, structure. Um, let me first give you the coefficient ring. Uh, so uh, lambda will be the what, what I guess is corresponding to uh, lambda zero Novikov in the Fukaya notation uh, is power series i goes from zero to infinity a i t to the beta i a i are just real numbers uh, beta i are classes in the second relative homology uh, of non-negative energy moving to infinity. Um, and to that, we add formal variables. So let's say s, t0, tn formal variables. Um, and r is lambda with a power series in these variables. I will also need another coefficient ring. This one will be the actual ring over which the infinity algebra lives. And that one will be for interior constraints, so for the bulk deformation, basically. So q uh, is just power series in the t's. Sorry, uh, polynomials in the t's. I don't want it to be power series. I don't need it to be power series. Um, I think so. In each of these, I want uh, the ideal of, of, of variables. So I have here the special variables s and tj. And I have also big T to the power of beta. I want uh, to single out the uh, ideals 
uh, spanned by these formal variables, so s, t0, tn, and also um, those betas where the energy is positive. Um, let's, let's call it maybe a name. Let's give it a name. Um, let's call it lambda plus. And this one will have the ideal IQ uh, generated by T0, Tn, and again, lambda plus. OK. Last thing I need to tell you before defining the infinity structure is the degrees of the variables. So I, I, uh, uh, I define the degree of t to the beta to be the Maslow index of beta, um, the degree of s to be 1 minus n. n is, again, the dimension of the manifold, the complex dimension. And the degrees of tj should be just some even numbers. Don't really care which. Um, eventually, for applications, I will choose a specific, uh, specific degrees for tj. But for now, I just care that they are even. Uh, so n is odd, so 1 minus n is even, and the Maslow index is also even because L is orientable. So the degrees of all variables here are even. Um, OK, now I choose the module uh, to be my module to be differential forms on L with coefficients in this R. And to this, I want uh, structure maps MK. Well, OK, before I do that, I need to tell you what gamma is, or mk gamma, where I will need to choose gamma. Uh, gamma would be the bulk deformation of the structure. So um, let's say there are forms in relative um, homology so, uh, with coefficients in q, such that they do have some variable in them. So by relative cohomology, I mean, let's say that, OK, let's say I mean that the gamma uh, restricted to L is just 0. Is there any difference between the color chalk and the white one? Do you see? No? OK. I um, feared that. Is this better? Thank you. Slightly better? Um. <laughs> okay. The what? Blue or red? Uh, yeah, no, as long as it's clear that it's a different color. This one, I, I'm afraid this one may not be seen at all. Okay, whatever, let's stick with the green. Um, Yes, uh, degree of gamma needs to be 2 in, this, in, in the sense of this complex. So it takes into account both the uh, degree of a differential form and the degrees of the variables uh, as defined, as, as chosen uh, before. Um, yes, yes, I was so focused on the colors that I forgot all the important things, sorry. Um, D gamma should be 0 and has a total degree 2. Um, it should have some variable because I will plug it in a lot of times, so I want the, the series to converge. Um, and now that I've chosen gamma, I can define structure maps as follows. Let me, yeah, that's fine. Um, so I need k inputs in C, and I just do the Fukaya stuff. A style thing, um, pull and push of differential form. So I need to sum over uh, classes in second relative homology, uh, z l greater or equal to 0, um, t to the beta, 1 over l factorial. And then I push forward the pullback of the differential form. So of B. OK, I didn't tell you anything about the Bs. That, that's very nasty of me. 
Um, OK, I'm, I apologize. I will finish writing what I'm doing now, because otherwise it's just half a sentence. But then I will return to explain what's going on here. I'm sorry. Goes from 1 to k, and then watch this. F i gamma, and then a special case, which I always forget. k1 is the alpha 1. OK. Um, what I'm using here, and I should have probably said that before in the settings, because this is part of the assumptions, I'm using moduli spaces of disks. Um, Genus 0, it will always be genus 0 in this talk. Um, k plus 1, beta is just maps from the disk to x with um, boundary constraints in L. It's supposed to be holomorphic. And there are points z0 to zk in the boundary, and marked points w1 to w L in the interior, uh, so that the degree of the map is beta. So let's say d del d is beta in the relative homology. And uh, what else? That's about it, I guess. Uh, do library parameterization, compactify, gram of a compactification, so I add stable curves. And there are evaluation maps at boundary points and at interior points. So let's call this f b b is for a boundary. j goes from 0 to k. And this is evaluations at interior points from 1 to l. So, um, so well, yeah, OK. So what I did there before is to take the constraints I want. So I, I, I think of alpha 1 to alpha k as constraints I will put on the boundaries of a disk, on the marked points 1 to k, z1 to zk, uh, on the boundary of the disk, and gamma as constraints I put on the interior uh, marked points 1 to l. Uh, pull the constraints back uh, by evaluation maps, so now it's a form on M, and then I push it forward by the evaluation map at the special point 0, z0, which I did not use so far. So in order to carry out this whole thing, I need to assume a bunch of things uh, on M. I needed to have a smooth structure, and I need the evaluation map at 0 to be a proper submersion. So I will assume all these things. There are examples. For example, OK, there are examples where this is true. So I will not be able to put it down, pull it down. Oh, yeah, I can. That's nice. I'm taller than I thought. <laughs> OK, um, so I need to assume a bunch of things. M, K plus 1, L, beta is a smooth orbifold with corners. And uh, F, B, 0 is a proper submersion. And the base example throughout the talk is CPN and RPN with their standard structures. Um, yeah. And of course, we only take odd n because that's, that's the assumption I made even before. OK. Um, okay. So. Yeah, so I pull back the constraints, and then I push this thing back along the evaluation map at 0 to back to L. So now it's a form on L um, that represents maps uh, with, const with boundary constraints at alpha and interior constraints in gamma, except the case k equals 1, where I also have the special contribution of d um, <coughs> of, of a differential, the a boundary of the first constraint. So this case comes from thinking of the moduli space uh, beta equals 0, um, k plus 1 equals 1, and L equals 0. So that, that moduli space is not stable. k plus 1 equals 2. k plus 1 equals oh, 0 and 1, right. Thank you. 
Um, yeah. So that's 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 not not a stable moduli space, right? Two zero zero, not stable. So let's say. Uh, but but I still need uh, still need this contribution in order for the infinity equations to work. So the claim is. fact or a theorem or whatever. Um, C with mk gamma k at least 0 is a, an A infinity algebra. So in other words, it satisfies the A infinity uh, relations. If we uh, take fix a k and take all splittings of k1 plus k2 equals k plus 1. Uh, we have mk1 gamma. And, uh, and then we plug in fixed alpha 1 to alpha k. mk2 gamma alpha i plus 1. Sorry, i minus 1 i. i plus k2 minus 1 i plus k2, etc. alpha k equals 0, where I sum over all possible splittings to k1 and k2. And also, of course, uh, the first point varies, runs from 1 to uh, k1, the, the, the special constraint in the other disk. OK, anyway, uh, we got the infinity algebra. I also promised you bounding pairs. OK. First this. Um, OK. I promise that all this thing has a point. I do promise that. Um, so the definition would be, let's say I have um, gamma psych. Uh, gamma comma b. OK, that's a pair. Uh, gamma b is a bounding pair. Uh, OK, a bounding pair is gamma b bounding pair is gamma b, where gamma is as before. So it's, it's a suitable gamma to plug in. So these, the assumption is are again exactly as before, iqa relative forms um, closed degree 2. Uh, B also has this ideal there to, to, to ensure convergence, but it lives over L, so basically in C. Uh, d definitely not closed, but also has a, a known degree. A degree of B is 1. Again, the degrees in C, so it has contributions from differential forms as well as uh, formal coefficients, formal variables there, uh, such that they satisfy the more Cantan equation. So what in short we could write m e to the b, m gamma, sorry, e to the b. In other words, um, sum over k greater or equal than 0, m k gamma b k times equals a constant times 1. Now, note that 1 is if an element inside of C, right? It's a different, I mean the differential form, which is constant 1 on L. Um, C is a constant that, well, I know that it's, it's in this ideal, and I know it has um, what else do I know about it? Probably know its degree, right? B's of degree 1, these are of degree Degree two. I think so. 
Uh, the degree of C, though, is determined because mk has degree 2 minus k and b is of degree 1, so the whole thing has is degree 2. Um, okay. What else? Um, oh, I would, I would mention, though, that since the degree of gamma is 2 and all the formal variables were of even degree, it means that the form degree, the differential form degree of gamma is even. Um, so, for example, in the CPN, RPN, that's pretty much all the degrees. It's all the interesting cohomologies in even degree. So, that's um, kind of reasoning, maybe an example to that, that will justify it. Okay, so a bounding pair. Um, okay. And. I maybe the I, the idea is that once you have a bounding pair, you can define the superpotential I talked talked about before. Uh, let me classify. Okay, let me let me classify. Um, let me classify bounding pairs for for one case. Um, the whole business is joint work with Jake, so I should have mentioned it before, but. Solomon, Jake Solomon, and so, um, let's say the Lagrangian is a is a rational sphere, rational cohomological sphere. Uh, then there's a map going from bounding. Pairs, modular equivalence class. I mean, gauge equivalence. Let me not go into that because because it's not going to help us. Um, into where it should live. I will tell you what the map is, and then you see what what the range is. So a pair gamma b will map to the cohomology class represented by gamma and the integral of b over the Lagrangian. So here we have um, so the f the first so so the range is a direct sum. First component of the direct sum is cohomology again uh, multiplied by the ideal of, of variables. Uh, gamma was only of degree two, so here we can only or can uh, only look at degree two. Uh, we can constrain ourselves to degree two elements and then B uh, maps to, to a constant, so it's someone in R. Uh, but again, it has at least one variable, so basically it's in the, in the ideal. And this one, well, B was of degree 1. Integration by L reduces degree by N. So this is uh, elements of degree 1 minus N in the ideal. Um, and the theorem is that in the rational sphere cohomology case, this row is a bijection. Um, in particular, if you fix gamma, then Bs that make uh, that complete gamma to a bounding pair are classified <coughs> by their top degree uh, part. Um, and so, so now I have enough to, to tell you about the superpotential and what it has to do with open gram of Witten theory, and then I can move to the uh, relative quantum uh, cohomology. Okay, in order to define this, I want superpotential is supposed to be a generating function for a gram of width and variance. So I want it to count disks. So I have the maps there that cover the cases where the disk has at least one marked point. Uh, let me also define m minus 1, which will count. Well, m minus 1 is the case where k plus 1 equals 0. 
So that's disks that have zero boundary points. Um, it's just, well, again, I take f i pullback of gamma, zero boundary points, but I still have gamma at L interior points. And I have to sum, so take uh, proper coefficients, so t to the beta, 1 over L factorial. And then instead of pushing it along the evaluation that I don't have, I just integrate over the moduli space. So it's 0, L, beta. Sorry, I didn't use the bar L as before. So that's just now an element in the ring. Um, and I want to define uh, spherical disks. So um, let's say, let's say I have a map from R to itself that takes an element of the form A, S to the K, and then let's say C to the beta, and then, well, uh, little t, 0, L, 0, little t, N, L, N. That's every element in R is a sum of such little creatures, and I map it either to 0 or to itself. Let's call itself A. Here is an R, is in the real. Uh, let's call itself eta because I don't want to write it again. So it's either eta or 0. Eta if I probably want to do it the other way around 0 or eta. 0 if k equals. 0 and beta is in the image of the second homology. And eta otherwise. So what it does, it takes a power series. And for each monomial, it decides, uh, it, it only keeps, did I just do it the other way around? Type D should take these. Yes, I did it the other way around. I'm sorry. This is eta. This is 0. It only keeps those uh, that have this property of having 0 powers of s and beta in the image of, of the closed homology. The reason I want to consi consider these separately is because, um, well, s is the variable I'm using to track boundary constraints. So. Uh, I will make this choice in a moment, but I will want, for example, to take an integral equals s. And we know that the gammas don't have, don't involve copies of s at all because I chose it with coefficients in q, which was designed to not have copies of s. So s is is keeping track of boundary constraints. Uh, when a disk has no boundary constraints and it comes from the absolute homology, it means that uh, the moduli space has an additional type of degeneration, not only uh, bubblings in the compactification, but also um, the boundary can collapse to a point. Right? Basically, this is a sphere that intersects L. So this is another, OK, this should have been green. Never mind. Uh, this is another uh, degeneration that occurs in the boundary of the moduli space, and bounding pairs do not um, do not control this kind of degeneration. So I will need to treat it separately. Okay. Now I can define the superpotential. Um, omega is, well, it's a function really of gamma and b. So it has the parts where k is at least 0, and it also has the part where k is minus 1. So OK, 
Okay, this is the Poincaré pairing. So basically what it means is that I have the constraint be not only on the 1 to k boundary points, but also on the 0 point. Pairing m with, <laughs> with something is like putting the something as a constraint on the 0. Uh, formally, psi times eta is just, well, let's say. Yeah, uh, I should also have mentioned that the whole business is up to signs, because the signs are a mess. And uh, they're not informative. Um, I, I, I mean, I suppose in this, for, for the purpose of this talk. Um, OK, so this whole thing. And now we take, uh, we subtract the D of this whole thing also. OK, so uh, the output here of the pairing is an R, right? So that's just the whole, f the, the whole expression is, is a power series, is an element of R. And then I take the type D of that, and I subtract it. And the result is what I call omega. And the theorem is that, again, uh, that if we have equivalent pairs, I, I realize that I did not define equivalence, but I just want to justify somehow the, the, the terminology of invariance. Uh, then we get uh, the same superpotential. Okay, and in the case of a rational homology sphere, which did I? Did I raise it? I may have. Oh no, here it is. Um, in this case, I I can also write omega uh, in a, a for, for 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 a special case which I use to define variance. So. Let me uh, make a, a specific choice of gamma and b here. Makes geometric sense. Sorry. Well, I, I yeah, I mean, I will use the same choice later also for the um, for the WDV equations. Yeah, we have a good chance of getting there. Um, so so uh, it's not really only for OGW. I mean, you can really think of this particular choice for the rest of the discussion. Um, maybe a better. <sighs> gamma 0, gamma n, with just real coefficients for now, uh, basis such that, OK, such that they represent a basis, gamma 0, gamma n, and the cohomology, relative cohomology is a basis. And then I pick gamma to be the sum j goes from 0 to big N, tj gamma j. And the degree of tj, remember, I let myself Pick any degree as long as it's even. So, uh, so I want it to be two minus gamma, and of course I want the gammas to be of even degree. So it's not really all of the cohomology, just the even part. Um, okay, so so the total gamma is of constant degree two, right? We have T J of degree two minus degree of gamma, and then plus the degree of gamma. That's two, and also. And choose B uh, such that uh, the integral of B over L equals little s. Okay, so I know I can do this choice because I know that for any gamma, I can find a B with whatever integral I want. So this is a completely legal choice. Um, I pick it again for geometrical reasons. So I want to allow arbitrary constraints in the interior. So I want gamma to be able to, well, linear combinations of, of OK, what I'm doing. The m's are linear in gamma. So if I choose, if I just take a sum of all possible gammas, I can arrive uh, in the superpotential to any uh, combination of interior constraints that I like. and. Uh, the b's, well, I want the, the boundary constraints to be governed by s. So if I have the power of s, it should reflect the, number, the amount of boundary constraints. And we said that 
those b's that are the boundary constraints are uh, um, determined by their integral, so I pick the integral to be just s. Uh, geometrically, it corresponds to taking a point, um, and then the, the lower degree parts of b are, are corrections that, OK, I shouldn't be saying this, because we don't have time. OK, um, sorry. Anyway, this is, uh, this is a choice that makes sense geometrically. And taking this choice, one thing to, to do is, is to define OGW as uh, coefficients of, of the omega, of the resulting omega. So let's, let's just, OK. Um, the resulting omega is, or in other words, it can be now thought of t t zero to t n s is a generating function. of genus zero, open grom of width and invariance. OK. Um, so the way we started working on WDV was because we wanted to compute these invariants or find some relations that this omega would satisfy. Um, yes. The ambient manifold, compact, odd dimension, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay. Um, OK. So relative quantum cohomology, uh, we, we needed to define this. The thing I did not stress so far is the, the, the use of relative cohomology. The constraints we plug into omega are in relative cohomology, uh, which means that if you want to describe, well, what you, OK. Um, The way you, you think, for example, of, OK, so let's, let me say something about closed WDVV, basically the usual WDVV. Um, right, you take a sphere with four constraints on it, let's say uh, W1, W2, W3, W4. And you consider the generations of this business, right? So for example, if W1 collides with W2, you get, um, you get a nodal curve with one of them having one with two, right? So W1 here, W2 there, W3 here, W4 on this bubble, or a W2 collides with W3, and then you get the other configuration with W4, W1, W2, W3. And WDV equations say that um, these boundary contributions are uh, equal to one another uh, in cohomology. So what, what the one way of, of, of considering such a, uh, such a component is to say this is a sphere with three constraints, W1, W2, and another sphere. So with const and basically another constraint in uh, W3 quantum product of W4. OK. Um, 
I would want to do something similar in the open case, except that my interior constraints cannot be just the regular quantum product. They have to be in relative cohomology. So we need some sort of a lift to relative cohomology of the um, regular quantum product. So let's talk about relative um, let me start with a uh, fixing notation that will be yeah okay L let me just um, I use CFL uh, to uh, talk about forms in L with uh, with with the coefficients in R, so basically R C, same as the big C before, uh, with the differential of m one. And now I want to deform it by gamma, but also by b. So what I mean here is m1 b gamma of, say, alpha is the sum of m k gamma, where I plug b's, copies of b, before and after the alpha. Uh, b k minus i, and I sum over k, and I sum over i. OK? Um, just the deformed floor complex. and. Well, this whole thing has to do with the absolute quantum product. So I also use the notation Q star C x for um, forms in x with coefficients in Q. Um, and just the usual differential uh, of differential forms, exterior derivative. Um, it also has the operation of star of the quantum product. And there is a map, which we call CO for closed open, from the closed to the open differential forms. And it's defined by what, well, a uh, more or less sky type notation would be Q01B gamma. What I mean is exactly that um, a closed form, let's say eta, is mapped to, let's see, okay. Um, so what I want to do here is instead of playing, I instead of inserting alpha in the interior, I insert eta in the, uh, sorry, alpha as a boundary constraint. Instead, I only use b's for boundary constraints, and in the interior, I insert a eta someplace. So. Some uh, some beta l k t beta factorial. Um, should I no? Okay, f b zero j from one to k f b j b and then okay. Now I want to plug in the eta someplace so j from 1 to some i minus 1 of i j gamma. And then I plug the a, a constraint. OK, i maybe is not the best choice, but let's stick with it. And gamma in the rest of the points. So from i plus 1 to l, again gamma. Uh, so I also have to sum over i 1 to l. OK. Um, so it's very similar to the way we defined m before, but instead of fixing the gammas, we fix the b's. And instead of plugging a boundary constraint someplace in the middle, we plug in an interior constraint someplace in the middle. Um, OK. And now I take the cone of this map. Well, 
product of a quantum complex is the cone of closed open. So in other words, um, it looks like closed, direct sum would be open, shifted, and the D cone is given by, uh, let's say, eta alpha is given by the, dif the differential of the closed complex and then the differential of the open complex minus the map applied to the closed part. OK. Um, this is what I call the relative complex and then the relative <coughs> homology would be um, would be the, of course, the cohomology of this complex. Um, okay, so this this creature has coefficients in Q. This creature has coefficients in R. Um, so this thing is a map of Q modules, and the cone is a Q module again. Um, so what's, what does this have to do with, with the quantum product? As well, in the first component, it really is just the quantum product. I mean, in the first component, we have a quantum product. We want something that somehow deals with the second component. So we have. Um, consider consider the f following diagram. We have this uh, usual and we have the close open map to the formology of L. And we have, OK, we can also map one of the components here by the closed open map. And we get like a module structure. Sorry. Um, Um, and, well, we can observe that there is a map here, which I will also denote by a star, but a different one. Okay. star uh, eta star alpha is, let me do the picture because we don't have time for all the formula, but it has input in x and in l and has an output in l, so it's uh, defined by a disk with geodesic constraint. Let me, OK. Uh, with, with three marked points that are constrained to lie on a geodesic. And OK, one of them is the output, so that's just the z0 point. And the other two, uh, one in, oops, sorry. Eta is in the interior, and alpha is another boundary point. OK, so this is, uh, so, so this is again defined by evaluation maps, but instead of taking the whole moduli space of all maps, we only take the moduli space of, the, uh, of, of maps so that it has uh, three marked points on the geodesic, the zero point, another point that ends up a constraint in alpha, and, uh, and, and an interior point that eventually is constrained in eta. OK, so we take like a moduli space of KL and another geodesic condition, G, o, de, G 
geodesic condition, where the condition is that, let's say, Z0, Zi, and W, well, let's say W1 for the sake of convention, lie on the geodesic. I do take Zi to be arbitrary because, because the structure is deformed to, to have B insertions before and after. Uh, OK. So, so I have this moduli space, and then pull push of evaluation map defines this operation. And now if you follow the diagram, let's, well, I guess, uh, if you follow the diagram, what you see is that this thing will commute on cohomology, but will not commute on chain level. Let's maybe do the picture. So if we start by, let's say, eta and zeta, it will be mapped to the product, so a sphere with constraints in eta and zeta. Um, and then mapped by the close open map to uh, a disk, right, with constraint in this sphere, so in this quantum product. So this is the configuration. If you go the other way around, uh, this is mapped to well, OK, this is mapped, I guess, to eta and then a disk with a constraint in zeta. And then this is mapped in turn by that creature to um, a disk with an con interior constraint in eta and a disk constraint with zeta. So you see on chain level, it's definitely two different, very different creatures. But if you uh, consider Did I just break it? If you analyze the infinity equation for for uh, the space with constraints on eta and zeta that lie on a geodesic, you see how they bubble, right? Eta and zeta can bubble uh, relations for this space. So uh, basically what it says is that, if that the combination of boundaries of the moduli space equals 0. So um, the boundaries are. Uh, if eta, a, a, a contributions of boundaries are when eta goes to the boundary mark point or when eta goes to zeta, so it has. Did I? No, that's fine. Okay. Eta goes to the boundary marked point and zeta remains on the bubble, or eta goes to zeta either at the interior, so we have eta and zeta, or at the boundary, so we have eta and zeta. Um, so you see these two uh, should, the difference between these two is, is, is that. That is just m1 b gamma of eta zeta, eta zeta. So this is something exact in the floor complex. Um, so the diagram will commute on cohomology, but definitely not on uh, chains, and what you can do to fix that is to add exactly this kind of operation. So we define um, this goes from x to CFL. It's like the light bulbs. A zeta maps exactly to this thing. Again, I use the pull-push operations along the evaluation maps, but instead of taking the whole moduli space, I only take moduli space with the constraint that two interior points lie on the same geodesic as the zero boundary point. Um, OK, and then I have a module structure, structure 
of this relative uh, complex over the closed complex, which I denote by the letter mem. So it's a Hebrew letter standing for product. I will not have time to justify why it's a product. Well, maybe I'll say a little bit, because we started a little bit late. We did. Um, yeah, well, OK, basically, I draw it like an almost closed triangle and add a chimney there. So that's kind of. Um, close relative um, mapped to relative by mem of close, say, eta and relative, say, zeta times uh, zeta and alpha. So uh, the f it has the, an x component and an l component. The x component will be just the, the usual quantum product. And then the L component, I will take the sum of these two. So eta circle zeta, and didn't, didn't call it a name. Let's, let's call it a circle, uh, plus eta star alpha. OK, uh, so this is a nice module structure. And this thing, it descends to cohomology. And um, the way I turn it into a product is to change the domain a little bit. Um, so I, what I do, in fact, is is define a reduced uh, relative cohomology. Um, so uh, to define product. I have a reduced reduced complex, just as you would define reduced cohomology in, say, singular cohomology or whatever, a relative complex. And then you have a reduced quantum cohomology. And so you increase the relative part a little bit, you pay for it by decreasing the absolute part a little bit. So uh, q hat in the absolute case will be uh, forms whose integral is 0 over l. So gamma restricted to l, integrated over l is 0. So that's a little bit less than the whole complex. And then it's uh, cohomology Let's call it H hat. This is the cohomology of this complex with D. And the claim is that. The, this this funny cohomology is isomorphic to the relative quantum cohomology, reduced relative quantum cohomology I defined before. And then I can extend, well, I only need to extend really the star, this star, to the bigger complex and restrict the circle to the smaller complex. So I extend star to. CF hat, uh, sorry, QC hat relative, and then I get mem defined on uh, relative homology um, uh, a lift of the absolute quantum product. What it has to do with other things is you can use this now to describe interior bubbling in WDVB equations. And I guess we don't really have time to do that. So let me stop here. <laughs>